What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm taking you through my first transfer plans going into game week 10. What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. FPL Harry here and today I'm taking you through my first transfer plans going into game week 10 of FPL. Game week 9 was the week that I played my wildcard and it went so, so horribly wrong. Basically everything that I would have hoped for didn't happen and everything that I sold for my previous team went and did well. So yes, I had Manchester City in there, De Bruyne did well and Haaland, my captain, did well, but the rest of my team is an absolute state. As you can see as well, I do have Mitrovic who did get an injury. Doesn't look like he's necessarily going to be available. Let's wait on team news on him. But yeah, that's not great. And I had no Newcastle defence in my team as well. I decided to bench Trippier. I predicted that Fulham would score and they did score but it just happened that Trippier had been taken off already about five minutes earlier so everyone with Trippier got that Newcastle clean sheet and I had it sat first on my bench so it's not been a good week the Manchester City guys did pull it back slightly I need some points from Madison and Danny Ward who I did start on Monday night for Leicester to hopefully pull back a little bit of rank but I have fallen from about 35k to 90, about 100k on my wild card as well. So not a good week, but looking ahead to how my team is lining up going into game week 10, I'm currently playing a 4-4-2. Now, one of the actually the best things about my wild card draft is that I managed to basically pick 11 starters that I wanted outfield and then goalkeeper, of course, which means that with Mitrovic potentially out, I don't have to go and make a transfer because Trippia, who was on my bench, can just come in and I still have a pretty strong 4-4-2. So Trent is in there and we'll talk about him in a minute. I was not impressed with Liverpool at all. Again, I thought potentially, given they had almost a month off since they played their last Premier League game, that they might come back and put it on a good show, given that Salah looked good over the international break, given that Trent has a bit of fuel to the fire, given the comments made about him on England duty as well. But it didn't happen and Trent is definitely a player. I'm considering what I'm going to do with him going into the next couple of fixtures. Cancelo in there with James and with Trippier. I like those three a lot. James looks great going forward. Although he conceded to Crystal Palace, I didn't really expect that much of him in that game. From game week 10 onwards, I am hoping for some points for him. Into midfield, we have Madison, we have Zaha and then Martinelli. I almost sold Martinelli. If I'd only watched my deadline stream, he almost went to the likes of Harvey Barnes. Let's see if that pays off or not. But given that Martinelli did get four points, so it's okay. It's not too much, but it isn't maybe as much as I expected. Let's see how he gets on in the next couple of weeks. And then we have De Bruyne again. Southampton at home was the fixture I really wanted him for. But given that he did so well with two assists against Manchester United, I think it's possible that he does really well again in game week 10. But I would like a goal from him. It's great him getting these three-point assists. But if he could score like he almost did very early on in that Manchester derby, that would be even better. And then up front, it is Haaland, captain at the moment. I'm not going to move off him. I think everyone under the sun will be captaining Haaland this week. And then we have Dominic Solanke. Again, I owned him because it allowed me to forward the rest of the team. The only other option I was going to go up front for was probably Ivan Tony, And he didn't get anything either and got a yellow card. So actually Dominic Solanke was equal. And he has a good couple of fixtures coming up, including Leicester at home this week as well. So of course, I do have Mitrovic sat first on my bench going into game week 10. I will be having a look at the press conference quotes. But if he's going to be out short term, he does walk into Bournemouth at home in game week 11. So if I don't have to play him this week and he's injured, I have an okay squad to get by without him. I could just save the transfer and then bring Mitrovic back into my lineup for that Bournemouth at home fixture. But I'm going to have to potentially see how long he's going to be out for if he's going to be back for game week 10, game week 11, or even after that. So that will decide whether I keep Mitrovic, but I definitely need to look at some replacements for him. And Trent Alexander-Arnold is already on the chopping block again. So the first player that we are looking to sell is Mitrovic of Fulham. The first player that we could go and get is Ivan Tony. Now, I don't actually have quite enough money in the bank, unfortunately, given that I sold Tony and I've lost value there. I could move back to Ivan Tony, but I would have to make another transfer and this would be a minus four. The next few fixtures for Brentford are not quite as good as I wanted to. A couple of difficult home games and those away games a bit tricky as well, like going away to Newcastle this week. It's not that great. And Brentford have put in a few mixed performances, although he did score that hat-trick against Leeds. He's been pretty hit and miss so far this season. The other options that I have, I could just go down and just get a 4.3 option, given that I have a strong 
strong squad that I don't necessarily need this extra player. I could just downgrade him and play the likes of Trippier every single week and just go and get Archer, who's probably the 4.3 option that I would go and get at the moment. The only issue with that is it does not set me up that well going into game week 12. Of course, the blank game week, I need as many players as I can get out that week and having a 4.3 dud option on your bench doesn't really help you when planning for that game week. So I could go and find a sort of mid-priced option in the likes of Daka or Ian Nacho. Again, wait and see if Daka is fit to play on Monday night. But if it's not, then Ian Nacho, both those players are in around sort of 6 million. So 6.2 for Ian Nacho and 5.7 for Daka. If they're going to start leading the line for Leicester, given that I have a spare Leicester spot and given how good their fixtures are, the reason we're all buying Madison and Barnes at the moment, he could be a bit of a differential that I could go and get into my team. Now, again, looking at those fixtures for Mitrovic, I don't really want to sell him. If he misses the fixture this week against West Ham, then absolutely fine. But after that, Bournemouth at home, Aston Villa at home, Leeds away and Aston Villa at home before that difficult fixture in game week 15, I really want to keep him and I hope that he's back fit for at least that Bournemouth game and then I can play him for those four green fixtures that he does have. Again, if he's ruled out for more than two games, then I will have to sell him and those are my options that I'm looking at. Probably go down to a cheap option unless we get solid confirmation that the likes of Daka or Ian Nacho are going to be nailed for Leicester. If not, again, a 4.3 option and invest that money elsewhere. And then the final one we've got is Trent Alexander-Arnold. And I really owned him because I thought he'd do well against Brighton. They had a new manager and Liverpool had a big rest period going into that game and they did disappoint to quite a big extent. They now have two difficult fixtures against Arsenal and Manchester City in the next two. Then from game week 12, 13, 14, they do have a nice run of fixtures where I do think I probably want to own Trent. A lot of us looking at Salah as well. I did plan on bringing Salah in for game week 12 in replace of De Bruyne. But I'm not really sure I want to do that. I want Salah as captain in game week 12. But after that, I think I want De Bruyne back because Liverpool just don't look good enough at the moment. They really need to prove over the next couple of games if I want Salah. But we're talking about Trent at the moment. If I was to sell Trent, there are a few options I'd go and it would be a big sort of downgrade in money. Perisic is there. The upcoming fixtures are mixed. They do have Everton at home in game week 11, which is really nice. Part of the reason I'm looking to bring Son in for De Bruyne next week is to captain him. But again, given those De Bruyne performances, given the Liverpool performances, I don't necessarily mind playing De Bruyne against Liverpool in game week 11. But let's see what happens. Then the others I could go with are much, much cheaper. Given that I have Trent, Cancelo, Trippier that I could play every week, plus Grahy on the bench, I could just go downgrading. Fofana did start for Chelsea in the most recent game, so he does look like he's going to start, and he is a nice price, sort of 4.4 million. A nice run of fixtures for Chelsea, although they haven't kept clean sheets recently. It is a good, cheap option that I could go with. And then the other ones, Neko Williams, the cheapest option that we have. Soufal at West Ham was on my radar, but his minutes do not look sure anymore, so I am probably looking at Fofana if I have the slightest extra budget. If not, I'd go all the way down for Necco Williams. Do I think I'm necessarily going to make one of these this week? Probably not, but I am eyeing up Perisic going into that Everton at home fixture next week, especially because it looks like Emerson Royale is not going to be fit for the next few games. Now, he doesn't necessarily play on the same side as Perisic, but the less fullbacks they have, he doesn't seem to want to be playing Doherty at the moment. It does mean that Perisic looks pretty nailed to start either on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, or he's not quite as good, but as long as he's on the pitch, we know what he's capable of, given the set pieces and threat from open play he has. So Trent could definitely go do I think I'm necessarily going to do it after one week? Maybe not, but the next two fixtures are not good and I don't expect very much from them in them. So this is how my team is lining up. I am looking at Trent and Mitrovic as my potential replacements. I only have 0.2 million in the bank and one transfer to play with. Trent, big downgrade, could free up a lot of money that could allow me to do Mitrovic up to Ivan Tony, but that would be a minus four, which I don't really think is worthwhile this week. So I am looking at potentially moving Mitrovic to the likes of Daka or a 4.3 option or Trent to one of those cheaper options. If I had to predict now, I think depending on the Mitrovic thing, I'd either roll my transfer or move Mitrovic on. I think I'll give Trent another week to see how they get on over the next couple and hopefully have him back for that nice fixture run starting in game week 12. It is time. We are planning ahead for game week 10. Any questions about your team, drop it in the comment section down below. Have you got Mitrovic? Did you have Foden? How has your game week gone? Hopefully better than mine. My massive red arrow that I've had so far this week, but we do move. We look on to the next upcoming game week. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn on notifications to get a reminder of all my videos and when I do my live streams as well. Have a nice week. Good luck in game week 10 if I don't see you before then, but I'll be back again very soon.